Welcome back to Chronicles Big Red Zone Throwback. The 1990s saw national championships, but no team won more games or posted a higher winning percentage in the 80s than Nebraska. Along with offensive stars like Mike Rozier and Turner Gill came some of the baddest black shirts like Mike Knox. Regarded as one of the most feared black shirts of the 1980s, Mike Knox had a knack for big plays and big moments. I didn't know who was on the inside, so I didn't know where to run the ball. I just decided to run him over. I took pride in being a black shirt, and I, you went 100% no matter what. Well, practice at the game and I wanted to be known for one of the hardest hitters back in my time. The hard-hitting middle linebacker broke out in 1983, earning AP Honorable Mention All-American honors. And now, like then, believed the 83 team was destined for greatness. We definitely can win a national championship if we just play the best we can and not let it all go to our heads. A captain of the 85 team, Knox could already feel the game changing. Although he had six career interceptions, run stoppage was his forte. Evolution of the passing game, I believe, hampered me. I loved to have played in the 70s in the pros. That was all running, you know, be like Jack Lambert. A reminder of his one year on an NFL roster now sits in the office of the small business he has owned for the past two decades. It's ironic, my first job I ever had, uh, fifth, sixth grade, was cleaning the city pool back in Castle Rock. So now I just went full circle. Even 35 years later, Knox still gets recognized on the job, but it comes with the territory of being one of the dominant defenders of the decade. Well, if the current recruiting class is any indication, Scott Frost loves big offensive linemen. The current roster is already filled with guys six foot five, six foot six, six foot seven. And that trend really first started at Nebraska in 1986, when a long, tall Texan turned down the Longhorns to become a Cornhusker. And one got his NBA from Rice. A chalkboard in his basement diagrams the play. 49 counter sweep. A favorite of former Nebraska right tackle Doug Glazer. The guard pulls, takes the end, and then the tackle to pull around, and you get the first defensive back. As a two-year starter in the late 80s, Glazer helped the Huskers run it to perfection. We never thought of ourselves being that great team. And as we look back now and losing six or seven games over the four years, it was a pretty great accomplishment. As we get older now, we say, hey, we kind of paved the way and got them started in the early 90s. So we're trying to take a little credit for that, which we don't deserve probably at all. The six foot seven, 290 pound Texan came to Nebraska as one of the largest players in program history. He left as a team captain and a 1989 Walter Camp first team All-American. I think the most thing I'm proud about is just being part of the program. And it's a special place and it's interesting being 18 years old and they're giving you life lessons. Life lessons that have guided him now in his 28th year at Kiwit where he serves as the executive vice president. I've always kind of been a people person and, and whether it's a team sport, uh, playing and, and being a leader there with her teammates and same thing, it carries on to the business world. These two jerseys are pretty much all that remains after a house fire years ago. But three decades after his playing days, Glazer still holds on to friendships and memories from his standout Cornhusker career. Rick Lindquist used to tell his kids they retired his number after his playing days ended at Nebraska. Well, those kids soon learned that number 15 was for Tommy Frazier. But the guy that wore number 15 years earlier carved his own place in Husker history, including a record that still stands. On a cold November Saturday in 1979, Rick Lindquist etched his name in Cornhusker history. Coach Van Zandt asked uh, which of the starting defensive backs didn't have a, an interception yet, and I was the only one that, that didn't have one. By the end of the 21-12 win against Kansas State, the sophomore cornerback tied a program record with three interceptions, a mark that still stands. They were, uh, I think, looking to see where I was lined up and then deciding to go my way. They must have decided that I was the weak link in the uh, defensive backfield. As many times as they were picking on me, I mean, I might have had 10. As a three-year starter, Lindquist reeled in nine career picks and tallied 100 tackles. Not bad for a walk-on from Plattsmith, who never really thought college football was a reality. Well, I'd always thought that I would be a 
smaller college basketball player. In fact, I remember getting my very first letter from, um, I guess it was probably Cleet Fisher back then who recruited Nebraska. It had not occurred to me that anyone would be interested in me being a college football player. Not only did Lindquist earn all-conference honors, he was a 1981 first-team academic All-American. Today, he goes by Eric and has practiced law in Omaha for 34 years. Parts of it that are similar to athletics in that there's a winner and a loser and um, doing your best for your client to try to get them the best result possible. Uh, very similar to um, being an athlete and trying to please your, your coach. For Lindquist on the field, that often came in the form of a takeaway. Well, if not for how his career ended, Craig Sundberg would likely be just another lost letterman. But after biding his time as a backup, he's just another example of the power of perseverance. A second-generation Cornhusker, Craig Sundberg had the unenviable task of replacing legendary quarterback Turner Gill. I never really um, thought of it as, you know, did I make the right decision or not? It was, it was a dream, you know, to have that opportunity, and um, I would, you know, if I had a chance to do it over again, I wouldn't do any different. The Lincoln Southeast product started the opener in 1984, scoring the first touchdown, but a shoulder injury derailed his senior season as he started just six games to have waited that long and then have that evolve the way it did in terms of the injury and being replaced was probably as low a time as I'd ever been, you know, athletically. You have to be ready for everything and just be able to bounce back. And that's just what Sunberg did, capping his football career with a win against LSU, earning Sugar Bowl MVP. You couldn't script it the way, you know, I was sick and I was, you know, I'd lost a bunch of weight, I, I didn't have much energy and yet, you know, it really wasn't me out there. There was a supernatural force. Family and finance has been his life after football, but he returned to the field this fall, helping coach freshmen at Lincoln Southwest. I really enjoy working with kids when it's kind of their first experience because it was all new to them, you know, and, 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 and you don't have to get too complicated. You, you know, things are fairly simple. Sundberg admits terminology may have changed, but it's still the same game as his brief stint as Nebraska's starting quarterback. Craig Sundberg isn't the only one who has made a return to the game. Coming up, you'll hear from former Huskers who are making a new home on the sidelines and building up the next generation of players. You're watching KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle.